Another great feature of the animation workspace is the docked X sheet, and you can get to it by clicking on this icon here. In the X sheet, you can see frames that you've shot, like here I've shot these 15 frames and the camera's parked on frame 16, and they're represented by these X's in the exposure column. You can also see audio if you have audio loaded and you can put in notes. It's a great way to see a spreadsheet style version of what you're shooting. The concept of an X sheet goes back to drawing animation and even stop motion animation where you'd have to have something planned out, especially if you had sound involved. You would need some plan to show where you needed to put in certain mouth shapes or have the character move from one point to another. And the animator would always have these printed exposure sheets next to where they were animating, whether it was on a set or at a desk. You can still do that with Dragon Frame. You can hit this print button and it will print these X sheets out. And they're very useful printed to quickly draw on. When you go to print them, you're going to need to set an end frame, how many frames you actually want printed worth of X sheet. So before you hit the print button, you're going to want to set that to the length of your scene. Up in this top area, you'll see that you know this represents uh, the production name and the scene and the take for this particular shot. You can also write in the name of the animator here. Up here to the right, we have the add column and you can add audio, frames, exposures. Those are already there. That's why those are blanked out. There's add file number, which is a new thing. It's kind of interesting. It'll actually tell you the number of the real frame in case you've done a lot of editing and you've moved frames around. It'll tell you what the original file number is. And then there's just an empty column, which is sometimes useful for just writing stuff into. You can move these columns around by grabbing the column top and just moving them and letting them go like that. So I can just do that and rearrange these. You can also delete them by control clicking, so say remove. In the notes column, we have a cool feature which is called alerts. So this column is alertable, which means that if I come in here and say, you know, turn on light, like let's say you had to remember that on frame three, you had to turn on a light and you had to physically go do it. You click on this little diamond. So if you were shooting and you got to frame two and were about to shoot frame three, the computer would actually stop you and it would give you a warning to say, hey, you're supposed to turn on the light and you have to clear the warning before you moved on. So it's a little useful feature just uh, to, to give yourself reminders. But you can also make the column non-alertable. You can turn off the alerts. In keeping with the history of X sheets, you can draw motion paths with our pencil tool. So you could say, oh, this movement comes from here to here, and then we have an overlapping thing happening from here to here. And this could be useful to communicate to yourself or to another animator how you want the scene to go. You can double click here on the eraser to get rid of it. We also have, if you want a little bit more help drawing arcs, you can do that and even change the shapes of them later, which is kind of fun. You can see here I've shot a few frames and I'll hit playback here. So I'm having this little fun bit where these these pieces come together and change colors. Those are represented here by these X's as shot frames. You can edit in here. I know I've showed you that we can edit in the timeline, but you can also edit in the X sheet. So I could, for instance, take this repeating section right here from 10 to 15. I can shift click here and say copy and now I can click here and say paste overwrite. If I play this back, you'll see I've lengthened that area where it's repeating at the end. So all of those commands like cut, copy, and paste can be done right here in the X sheet. You can also do hold. So if I hover my, um, if I select a frame and then hover over the frame number, you see I get the, the hold tool. And now I can pull down and now I've added a hold. Probably in a bad place, let's see here, yeah. <laughs> right there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to Apple Z undo that. But you can see how versatile that is. Some of the other commands like hide or delete can be done down here through these icons. If I wanted to take a frame and hide it, I could select it here, come down, hit the hide button, and now that frame is hidden in playback. You can see it's still taking up a space here. So if you don't want to see that space, you can hide the hidden which is this little icon there. There's also an icon for delete and for hold. A couple other visual features. 
we have a text size, so you can make the text very big. And this is useful for some people who are working very far away from the computer screen, but they have to animate, you know, from six or seven feet away, and they've got a remote keypad, and they just need to see those frame numbers on the X sheet as they go. So we put that in there. So there's actually three different sizes, one, two, and three. Also, if you want to go old school and have the paper colors, you can switch to that, which is pretty crazy. One more thing to know about the X sheet is that it's in this same docked space that the guide layers are on. And we'll do another tutorial on guide layers, but they're hidden right back here, and that's what this tab is.